Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com. Today we're gonna to talk about some of the must-have tools for working on VWs and Audis. I have spent my career as a Volkswagen technician and in that time I have fine-tuned exactly the tools that I needed in order to fix or maintain VWs. And so much of this in the VW world tool-wise applies to the Audi world as well. So today we're gonna to talk about some of the basic must-have things you need for working on Volkswagens and Audis. This is whether you're a DIYer or you're a shop or a professional technician that wants to take on the challenge of working on German cars. Some of the things we're not gonna talk about today, basic hand tools, ratchets, sockets, screwdrivers, that kind of stuff, because you're gonna need that for every car that you're going to work on. We're also not going to go super deep into the highly specialized tools, things like timing belt tools, lock tools, and equipment like that, because not everyone is going to need that. That is very specialized. Now, in no particular order, we're gonna start with having triple squares. VW and Audi loves their triple square bolts, so you're going to need a handful of different styles of triple squares. Here I have some very shallow triple squares that are on 3 8 drive. I also have some that are a little bit longer on 3 8 drive as well. 6, 8, 10, and 12 are some of the more common sizes, but you actually may find yourself needing 14s and even up to 18s. There's a set by VIM that I think is a perfect set. I'll put links down in the description so you can check all of this stuff out. So I like the VIM tool set a lot. I bought the snap-on ones very early in my career and they served me incredibly well. Moving off of triple squares, we're going to need torques and we're gonna to need torques in a handful of different ways. I have the main ones that you're going to be using here, T20, T25, T30, and T45, of course. This is a really common one for belly pans. In addition to having them as sockets so you can put it on a ratchet, I also like to have bits. This works really well for maintenance. You can drop it in your quarter inch chuck impact. And for these, I have the long ones and I have the short ones. I actually use the short ones a lot more than I did the longer ones. But if you're doing things like intake manifolds, these work amazing. It's also not a bad idea to have an extremely short set of bits for those really tight spaces, especially on the interior and like underneath the intake manifold. On that note, this bit driver is made by Bluepoint. It's extremely fine toothed and it works great for things like the IMRCs on the FSI engines. It's also what I used to use all the time to do things like ABS modules and the motors for the HVAC system on B5 Passats. There's also other versions of this that are not fine tooth. I do not recommend those. I recommend getting the fine tooth ones. They're a little more expensive and worth every penny. Something else we're going to need to have is a variety of ways to take off Allen head bolts. The most commons are going to be five and six. Of course, as you can see, I got some stubby five and six, a little bit longer mid-length five and six, five and six ball end, standard length five and six and three eighths drive, and of course the extremely long ball end. It's also not a bad idea to have shorter ones than these quarter inch drives here. Again, because so much of the area that we work in is incredibly tight. When it comes to the Allen tools, you're gonna need more than five and six. Four is semi-common, five, six, obviously the most common. Seven, eight, and 10 are also used in addition to those smaller Allens, you probably want to look at a set of bigger ones. We cover from six to eight in this kit, but having some of these bigger ones will allow you to do things like axle bolts and transmission services and things like that. So this is another one you might want to buy an entire set. As you can see, the 12, 14, 17 are the most worn in this kit. One that's not super common today, but going forward, you are going to need, and even now there's a handful of repairs that do require it, are inverted torque sockets. Well, the inverted one is just the inverse of the torque socket. There's a handful of window regulators that use these type fasteners that you will need to have these sockets for in order to remove them. While this may not be at the top of your list, put it down at the bottom because you're gonna need one eventually. There's a couple of tools that I do think brand does matter. One of them being these blue point hose clamp pliers. The key here is the dual cups that grabs the hose clamp much, much better than the one that just has the U at the end. This has been my go-to set of hose clamp pliers for many, many years. There's also a lot of people that like the cable-driven hose clamp pliers. Those can work well, but I really recommend not buying the cheapest one. That's what I had, and I ended up giving them to somebody because they did not work very well. There is a lot of places where the cable-driven hose clamp pliers work really great. In fact, work better than these but don't cheap out on those and get a good pair. Because VW and Audi are very particular about the way wiring repairs are done, you're going to need a good set of wire strippers. Personally, I like these. The automatic ones are just fine too, if that's what you prefer. But 
more importantly, you're going to need some crimp tools. There was many moons ago a special VW Audi tool for crimping wires. By the time I got to the dealership, it was completely gone. So I got my own set. They're not that expensive and it beats hunting down the special tool. And as you know, VW Audi are known for wiring issues and hungry mice chewing on, on cabling. So I really recommend getting your own set of these. And since we're of course going to be using either the heat shrink style connectors or heat shrink over connectors, you're gonna need a heat gun as well to heat up that heat shrink or those connectors. This is a kind of a cool battery power one that I wish I had very early on in my career. Back in the day, axle boot failure was incredibly common. So you had to have a good pair of clamps to crimp the clamp together. This would crimp it and lock it into place. And for the small clamps, or the very soft clamps, these work really, really well. You just put it on the clamp and squeeze it and it will crimp the clamp. Unfortunately, when we hit about the Mark V B6 generation, the clamp got quite a bit more heavy duty and it was a real struggle to use these and get these done by hand. Yes, they have half inch drive openings where you can put breaker bars on them, but I found that to be incredibly cumbersome and hard to hold everything together while having those breaker bars on it, even with putting the axle in a vise. What I found was actually a heavy duty set that you set on and you use a drill or an impact or a ratchet and you twist it in with the bolt and that does a much better job of crimping those heavy duty clamps. I really like this set for any of the bigger boot clamps. Now this one may be a little bit more common than just VW and Audi, but since I have one with a VW emblem on it, I'm going to talk about it. And that's trim removal tools. The plastic and interior pieces on these cars have a very high strength and are really hard to get loose, sometimes impossible without breaking. So having a good set of trim tools is vital, whether it's these old bone tools that we used to get at training or something like these where you have several different styles to fit the need of removing whatever trim you're working on. The important thing here is you wanna make sure you're not always using something like a screwdriver that can mar up the plastic. Everything's held on incredibly tight and it mars and scratches really easy, so you need to be extra careful. I've lost tons of these over the years. I've had this set since about 05, and I've never lost one, probably because I had to pay for it. If you want stuff like this, you can actually get these from your local dealership. There is a tool number for them. These next tools may feel a little more specialized than some of the other stuff, but I think it's important to have these, and that is wire depinning tools. The number of TSBs that require a connector to be repinned or Things like water leaks in the B5, 5.5 Passats require you to depin connectors and install new wires. Having a good set of depin tools is incredibly important so you don't damage the wire, you don't damage the connector. The two that I used the most were these two, and these are actually OEM factory tools. While I recommend these as the best ones you can get, they're about 50 bucks a piece. If you don't want to spend the money, there's a couple of options. The Ford pin tool, it works really good on the VW connectors. Or if you want a DIY solution, taking the metal insert out of an old wiper blade and grinding it down works great. You get a little bit of spring pressure with it. You can fine tune it to the exact size for the connector that you're trying to depin. You can make them fast. Most shops have wiper blades thrown away every day and it's really easy. I actually ended up using this one a lot in the last bit of my career. So you can buy the factory ones for really expensive, save some money and buy the Ford tool, or just simply make your own. And that is probably what I would do, especially if I had the time and didn't need the tool right then and there. Now I mentioned we're not gonna talk a ton about hand tools. There are several hand tools that you're gonna wanna have. You're gonna want a pair of ratcheting wrenches, of course, that's vital. But the big key here, and this was a lot of doing rear brake jobs, is a ratcheting wrench for the 13 millimeter bolt at the end and a 15 millimeter wrench to hold the pin for the caliper. This is important, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because you need to have one that's kind of thin. It has to fit in that space on the caliper carrier. If you don't have one that's thin enough, like this blue point is thin enough, buy a cheap one, grind it down so that it does fit, because you do have to counter hold that piece on the caliper in order to remove it. In fact, out of all the 15 millimeter wrenches that I have, this is the only one that fits in that space. I also grabbed this 19 millimeter wrench. It's really important. You need to have a good one with thin walls in order to get on drain plugs for most of the cars that don't have that composite pan. You may also want to have an 18 for the VR6s that have a pretty thin head as well. A couple of things you're going to need for basic oil change maintenance are going to be some big boy sockets. 32 millimeter typically covers most diesels and 36 millimeter covers things like the VR6 and the FSI engines. I bought both of these in half inch drive 
but since I typically use either quarter inch drive or three eighths, I had reducers put on them. I've purchased a lot of reducers over the years. That's another thing you really wanna consider because you don't always have the right drive socket to fit in that tight space. You are also going to need an oil filter cup similar to this one. This one covers a lot of engines and a lot of oil filters. It's a must have, it's the 2.5, it's the TSI, a handful of other engines. You're going to need to have this one. One key thing to look at, this one's made by Ossenmacher. Notice it has a hole right here. This is to put a 3 8 drive extension in it. If you can find one, get one with this hole. Otherwise, you're putting a socket and an extension and a ratchet on there. It's one more tool that risk falling down in the belly pan and risk losing. They've since updated that and removed this hole. So make sure that if you're buying one of these, it has that. It's a personal preference of mine. Anytime I could reduce the number of tools that I was using on a job meant the potential for one less lost piece of equipment. As we round home, of course, you are going to need a scan tool of some type. This is a very old school VAGCOM cable. I still think that VAGCOM is the best if you're primarily doing VW Audi repair. This is obsolete. Now it's the Wi-Fi one, which works fantastic. You can use that one with your phone, which is really cool. And while I think the VAGCOM one is the best, it doesn't really matter what you get. There's no sense in sending brake jobs away or throttle body adaptations away or basic settings away because you can't do it. Worth every penny for a scan tool like that. And finally, this is one that, looking back, I probably should have started using from day one, and that is a wheel holder. This one is actually out of a Torag that came with a Torag that uh, I ended up totaling many, many years ago. And what this does, this screws in where a wheel bolt goes, and it holds the tire on. Similar to how all the cars that have studs, you can set the wheel on and it'll hold. That's what this will allow you to do. By the time I really discovered the value of these, it became a decrease in efficiency issue for me because I had a rhythm of putting tires on. But if you're just getting started, or if you're a DIYer especially, get a set of these, they work great, and it makes putting the wheel on so much easier. It's important to note there are multiple sizes of this. This is a 14 on one and a half for pretty much everything Mark IV forward. There's also a 12 on one and a half. That is more for the older cars in the VW world, but I think BMW still does use a 12 on one and a half. Be sure to check and get the right stuff. You'll know right away that it doesn't fit. This will either be too big or the 12 will be way too small. Really not a huge risk of cross-threading or messing anything up. All right, guys, so there you have it. These are the basics. So I will reach out to you guys and ask what else do you think you gotta have? Gotta have, must have tools in order to work on VW and Audi. Drop that down in the comments section below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, mash that share button, and don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on all the social media platforms. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Looking forward to seeing what kind of tools you recommend, and I will see you next time. Oh, there's one tool I can't believe I forgot. I think we can all agree that one of the biggest tools you're going to need is a giant can of beer. So cheers to working on VWs and Audis.